Hello, I'm Hannah Jordan, and you're listening to the Outdoors Group podcast. This podcast is a call to arms to get children and young people outside again. Whether you're an educator, parent, carer, or just an interested party, this podcast is for you. Each week, I'll be talking to a different guest about different aspects of the outdoors, from forest school provision to the importance of play, from specialist provision for young people with additional needs to empowering the next generation of environmental protectors. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Beverly Garland and Sam Rowley. Bev is the Key Stage 4 coordinator at the Outdoors School, and Sam is a curriculum tutor at the Shillingford site for the school. For those listening that don't know, the Outdoor School is a school for autistic children and young people with special educational needs and behavioural difficulties. It is run completely outdoors and operates from three woodland sites around Devon. Their bespoke curriculum is based on learner-led, project-based learning, and today they've both finally agreed to spare some time from their busy schedules to talk to me a little bit more about this approach. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thank you for having us. Welcome. Um, so I guess the easiest and most obvious place to start is by asking if you could explain what project-based learning actually is. So what does it look like in practice and can you give us some examples? Okay. Well, I think in a nutshell, uh, project-based learning is a teaching method that encourages learning by actively engaging in projects. The projects that we deliver may cover a term or they may be mini projects over just a couple of weeks. Project-based learning allows learners to develop deep knowledge as well as skills like critical thinking, collaboration, creativity and communication. It totally encourages learner engagement and often in project-based learning, application of knowledge and skills is needed, not just the regurgitation of information which can be seen in more traditional teaching methods. Learners can work more independently and we as adults can facilitate learner-led learner-centred opportunities much more easily through project-based learning. A project-based learning approach to our curriculum at the outdoor school allows children to fully immerse themselves in their own learning. Some elements may still require pre-teaching of a skill that will be needed within the project or maybe a hook to fire them up uh, to get the learner's imagination going. But that's it in a nutshell. (laughs) And then I think as a practitioner, um, we all do things very differently, but when starting to think about um, a project, then my team will come up with a suitable um, project theme yeah. for the next term. And this year we've gone very much along the line of the seasons. Yeah. So for example, um, we did spring, and literally the adults sit down and we just fire up ideas at each other to start with very much like a mind map yeah and just to give you an example if we were saying spring we might come up with ideas like we will use cameras to photograph signs of spring we'll do leaf rubbings we'll make mobiles uh we will make a 3d bug using woodland materials We'll use microscopes, we'll go on a bug hunt, we'll learn, that will lead to learning about habitats, food chains, life cycles, we'll look for frog spawn, uh, we'll listen to a spring poem, we will then write our own acrostic poem, having brainstormed good vocabulary, uh, we'll th- go on a walk and we'll see what the spring feels like, so we use our senses, um, we may do some physical building, we might make a raised bed, We might visit the garden centre, chew seeds, sow the seeds, see how long germination takes, record it in a table, learn about companion planting, whittle plant labels. (laughs) It's endless. Yeah, I was going to say the list goes on and on. Yeah. And that's kind of that then we will link into our phases and make sure that we're hitting our kind of curriculum targets. And then within the team probably some but one person will take responsibility for doing a medium term plan to make sure that we're going to cover all the key elements that will allow our learners to make progress yeah. on our curriculum pathway or yeah. phases as they're now called. The other way that we also work is to be truly learner led and sometimes an organic project will just come out of the yeah. air and we'll divert from our plans and go totally with that. Yeah. And an example in my group is we had a really big boggy area okay Shillingford is a little bit prone to that (laughs) and we were a bit fed up because it was just like mud everywhere yeah and we decided that we were going to embrace the bog 
and the learners researched plants that grow in bogs and suck up lots of water. We planted these, we researched French drains, they drew plans, they made one. We made a temporary fence to keep people off it while the plants took root. Uh, we, made, we used art, we made a lovely sign saying regeneration area. We made planters to go around the edge. That's amazing. We sourced <laughs> attractive logs. Yeah. And four months on, the learners are so proud of this area, yeah. which is now full of plants and undergrowth and no bog in sight. No way. So that's kind of like yeah. the two ways that work. And, but even within the plan projects, obviously we can divert to the learners' particular interests yeah. and play to their strengths as well. I was going to say, say, it's brilliant as well because from the regeneration project that you've just described, our learners saw that in our group and we decided to do a mini project similar to that. We also had a problem with a little bit of a bug. We made, <laughs> We're uh, really we selling this site now. <laughs> there are other things other than the bug, but it does tend to happen quite a lot. Um, but no, it was really nice actually because we then got the expertise from the two learners that work with Beverly. And actually then it was a bit of um, peer teaching as well. Yeah. We've ended up making a French drain as well, which has helped our problem. And we've created a regeneration area as well. Yeah. So actually it's really nice that a project that was purely spurned from their interest has then sort of taken over the site a little yeah. bit, which is lovely. Yeah, really um, awesome. I think it's really interesting, um, I put on my notes when applying for this, that um, every teacher's interests and all of their experience will lead into the projects that they teach. Um, it will look different when every teacher slash practitioner is planning it. Yeah. Um, and it's really important for the children that they actually get that diversity. It's really cool. And then it will lead to a unique project for them. And they will take something different from each project. Um, it almost allows you to adapt each project to the learner's needs, ability and their interests, yeah. which is really cool. I've um, made a note of three different projects um, and all spanning a different amount of time. I've included one project that took a term and it was my first project that I did and I actually did it with Beverly. Um, <laughs> and it was a Stone Age topic. Okay. And I thought it really linked to what the children would like to do. Um, and the aim of it was to connect the children with the landscape and promote something called recapitulative play. Uh, which sounds... <laughs> Can you say it again? Re <laughs> recapitulative play. Okay. Um, it sounds really fancy. Basically, it allows children to access a deeper connection to where they are and the ancestry. And, and That's amazing. It's a really cool. Yeah. I didn't know when I planned it that it actually had a name. It was a thing, yeah. No, um, but we read Wolf Brother um, yeah. and we looked up some work from the Scottish Forestry Commission. Yeah. But it actually led to a deeper connection with all of our children with the forest, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, brilliant. Really and actually, awesome. it worked really well and they all loved different parts of it. We did um, eel basket making out of willow, um, we made traps sort of yeah, pitfall, pitfall traps, traps. Yeah. which was amazing yeah, and we did the uh, whittled twigs and then made natural dyes and did I can't, what's the word for the um, pictographs oh, pictographs, or pictographs. Yeah. Um, so, so, so like, like the cave paintings yeah, so yeah, yeah. tried to replicate those natural dyes yeah. um, but I, I think that was almost two years ago we did that and yeah. the learners still talk about that it. they yeah. really loved it it was a really successful which project. also shows the learning being embedded right absolutely completely um because i think back to gcse's and think i can't remember half of what i learned like, absolutely yeah. and the fact that they still go on and a lot of our learners didn't necessarily enjoy education before they came to us yeah so the fact that they're still talking about something that happened two years ago at school yeah is amazing yeah and the fact that actually some of them still try the techniques that they learned then as yeah. well um, it was quite funny how naturally um, they went through some of the steps that, for example, the Stone Age children would have. Yeah. So instantly we were like, oh, we're giving you an assortment of stones and we need you to make stones for different purposes. Yeah. And automatically they started flint napping themselves. Yeah. And that was completely learner-led. We didn't do anything apart yeah. from saying, this is the outcome we'd like to get to. And it was amazing seeing that journey for them. That's awesome. It was really cool. Um, <laughs> My next topic that I was going to talk about is currently we're trying to make a comic book. Okay. Um, it's enabling the children to explore academic outcomes, but in a fun and creative way and yeah. a unique way to them. Yeah. Um, they kept going on last term about how come we don't do about superheroes yeah. and things like that. So I was like, okay, 
Let's I can, do superheroes. I can find the topic yeah, about yeah. this. That's absolutely fine. Um, and from that, actually, we've seen probably the most engagement I have since the Stone Age topic. And they're all absolutely loving it. They're creating their characters. I was about they're to say, they made their own superheroes. They made okay. their own superheroes. And yesterday, we actually made our own super villain as well. <laughs> and it's quite incredible how creative these children yeah. are and how their minds go into a totally different place. Yeah. It's wonderful. Um, the final topic I wanted to talk about, um, and it's only a week long, it's yeah. a really short topic. Um, but next week I've got another learner coming, another tutor coming from a different group. Okay. Um, and we were like, well, how can we encapsulate a topic within a week yeah. that can really capture him as well? Yeah. So we're going to be twinning our group with another group in the school. Yeah. As you would like twin a town or something like that. <laughs> or twin a toilet. Yeah, 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 completely. Um, but it's enabling the children to grow socially and emotionally. Yeah. And actually it's creating a wider sense of community rather than just a small community yeah. of a group. Yeah, yeah, so actually yeah. there are different purposes for Is the it topics. a group that's on another site as well? It is, it's okay. at South Grant. Okay. So hopefully, the idea eventually, we will start creating pen pals and maybe yeah. we can meet up. Yeah. And that would be such a wonderful thing That'd to be see awesome. bringing the community closer together. Yeah. That'd be really cool. That's yeah. clever, very clever. Well, so that just shows that projects can be so flexible because like, the variety there is immense. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. Completely. Well, as I say, it, it sounds like it's a much more holistic approach as well. Um, kind of, for that, particularly that last one you were just saying where obviously it's creativity, but you're also kind of getting some of those academic outcomes in and things. That, you, you know, it doesn't have to be, does it like an hour of maths, an hour of English? No, it feels absolutely. like it's much more Definitely overlapping. Um, I know that you guys have been working in education for a while. Um, can you tell me what you perceive the benefits to be over a more kind of traditional segmented approach? Can I start with that one? Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to admit, when I read this question, I felt a little bit of a fraud, because actually I've spent the majority of my teaching life at the outdoor school, and okay. I haven't had that much experience, but yeah. it was quite interesting to think about it. Yeah. Um, for example, Beverly has a lot more skills and a lot more experience than I do, mm. um, and it actually has a much broader sense of education than I do. Um, but unfortunately, the fact I spent three years when training within mainstream school, I've been disengaged and disagreeing fundamentally with the way things were being taught, the methodology and the reason for teaching it, the yeah. pedagogy. So then I researched places which had a more inclusive approach to education yeah. and found this place. So actually, I've been quite lucky. I've so Did you come here straight from teacher training? Pretty much. Less. I had a couple of years out, but okay. then, um, yeah, it's been my first proper teaching job. Yeah. And actually, I feel like I've been really lucky because it's enabled me to really come into this with fresh ideas rather yeah. than having different ideas of how things were before. Yeah. Um, so that's quite nice. Did his NQT with us here, okay. so that's been really positive as well. Yeah, we did. Um, in terms of the benefits that this has, I think it prepares children for the future. We don't know what the future will look like, so instead we need to teach them the skills so we know we can apply them yes. rather than give them outdated knowledge that actually won't be applicable in well, a couple of years. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, my job doing social media and podcasting when I was a kid that didn't exist. So it's <laughs> like, no, you know, and now it's mind-boggling how many people do digital kind of jobs that yeah, didn't exist 10 years ago so what's going to exist in we have not even dreamed of those yeah, jobs yet another no. 10 20 years completely so if you teach them the skills instead to be able to adapt to something and yes. overcome it that will be much more beneficial than teaching them the knowledge of something because yeah. that might change yeah um i think it creates inquisitiveness and lifelong learners as well mm. i think if the children actually enjoy learning they will want to do it more and more. Yeah. And learning's all around us. It happens everywhere, every day, every minute. So actually, the fact that the children are enjoying that and they want to embrace that, it means they will want to do it for longer. Yeah. And that's really cool. That is really, really cool. Definitely. I think just the way as humans we think, we don't think in like discrete subject areas, no. but that obviously, particularly in secondary school, is often the way mm. the curriculum is delivered. And I think that by doing it in a project-based way, naturally the connections will be made much more, much stronger yeah. and therefore retrieval will be easier and that knowledge is really, um, os by osmosis almost, is going to be part of the children. And, yeah. um, and I think that just the way humans and children learn is so much more aligned to project-based thinking. Yeah. It just seems logical project-based learning it seems logical that that is the way that education should be moving really yeah and it's certainly showing success with the nat the type of learners that we have yeah definitely definitely i was going to say i personally see 
the dream of project-based learning in a more creative and maybe a romantic way. Um, I imagine it's like a favourite book that you don't want to put down, or a favourite album that you keep playing, or a binge-worthy TV series, because actually they're all the things that you like to do outside of education, yeah. the learning paradigm. But actually, if we make project-based learning just like that, and that's how you feel about learning, um, then all of the learners will be really engaged and really yeah. want to do that. There's yeah. been some projects where I've literally been so excited to start them, mm -hmm. and I just want to share it with the learners. Um, and then... I've had lessons in, within the project where they said, I don't want to stop for break, I just want to carry on straight yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. And for our children, that's like that's such amazing. a massive oh, yeah. breakthrough, it's brilliant. But yeah. I think as adults, if we're that enthused, that's got to rub off on the learners. Yeah. 100%. And we, we, it is, they get so immersed with, with our group, they're just the same. We forget all about breaks often. Yeah. Lunch we don't forget about, their tummies start rumbling. But often Definitely. in the morning, we, they'll just be like, oh, what's next? What are we doing? Yeah. And it's just like really... Excite! I think it's exciting, and it's uh, someone that's been in education twenty five plus years. Yeah, it's really excited me again. And, yeah, and got me really fired up. Mm. So I think it's Has it kind of positive. refreshed your love. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And uh, and it's lovely as an adult to look. You know, this is something fairly new to yeah. me, and I think that I'm learning again and being creative, which yeah. gets a bit stale when you're delivering a similar syllabus year after day, year. Day, and yeah, were you in secondary school before yeah. you came here? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was quite interesting. So I've, I've moved to a new house recently and we have a neighbour and she's got a little girl who's in year three. And she was showing me her knowledge journal, is what they're calling it in mainstream schools at the moment. And it included all of the knowledge that they wanted her to get by the end of Key Stage 3. Yeah. And each separate subject had three different themes in it yeah. throughout the year. And there was eight different subjects. And I was like... Wow, well, that's a lot. Imagine flicking your brain between mm -hmm. each of them 20, different themes. 24, isn't it? Yeah, 24 different themes. And the problem is, you won't then get fully immersed in them. No. And she said, Oh, we did do that, but only for a couple of lessons. Mm -hmm. And it's like, actually, she was like, I wish we could have learned more about it. I wanted yeah. to know this, this, and this. Yeah. But it was almost, you're constraining their knowledge to a little part of it. Yeah. Whereas if you allow them to expand their brain, it's so much better. And yeah. learn a lot. Completely. As opposed to teach a lot. Yeah. 100%. Not helpful to get that firing of imagination yeah. and really the love of learning. I don't think. No, definitely not. Doesn't help. No, well, I, I mean, my my sisters were home educated, and one of them just loved art, and so from like age ten to sixteen, she'd spend two, three, four hours a day doing art, nothing else, and then she ended up going to Falmouth and doing art as a degree, and now works for an art company. And I always think if she'd have been in school and didn't have that free time to do that much art, would she have you would got to where she is yeah. now? I don't know. Um, maybe she would have, but you know, she was definitely benefited by having that free time to follow what she loved and do that almost, almost exclusively to everything else. <laughs> I think each child has an innate ability in them and something that they're really, really good at. Yeah. Um, and we should be the people that are fostering that and yeah. helping them grow in it. Yeah. Whereas I think sometimes because things are so, oh, we need to be doing this, this, mm. this, and there's such a strict regime, yeah. you don't have time for that. Yeah. But actually, they're the most important things. And at the end of the day, if they've got an interest and a passion in something, yeah. we should be growing that and hopefully pushing them to get a job in it. Because yeah. yes. that's where we get people that love the job they're in, love the life. And are innovators in their industry. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, the, the, the world changes without being too cheesy. <laughs> no, 100%. Um, was project-based learning something you guys naturally took to? Was it a bit of a learning curve as you kind of took it from theory to reality? Um, yeah, do you have any kind of advice for anyone who might be listening and interested in employing or kind of exploring this approach? I personally, I found it a very natural fit, yeah. uh, particularly beginning to work in an outdoor environment. It yeah. just seemed to really work well together. Um, coming from a secondary teaching background where subjects are all taught separately, um, it may be alien, but I had worked um, with students with challenging behaviour mm. for a long time and had, on a much smaller scale, use projects to try and re-engage them to get some interest yeah. back into learning um, but I find it really exciting full of endless possibilities and it certainly as I've already said sort of re-energised my love of education I think some colleagues um, initially when they perhaps join the outdoor school it's um, a big quite a big leap yeah to 
appreciate that actually we can still get all that curriculum through the projects um, and we use the term rewild um, and maybe sometimes we kind of need well I remember Chev saying to me I needed to be slightly less schooly when I first yes, started yeah. and it's maybe just that different way of thinking uh, which perhaps for some is a bit of a slower process but when they begin to see the positive outcomes from the learners I think that we all are sold on the idea yeah. that project-based learning is very successful in our outdoor environment yeah. and for the nature of learners that we have yeah it's a very good fit yeah I think, definitely yeah. I think rewilding it actually is the perfect way of describing it we are told whenever we are training to be teachers um, how to teach and yes. that actually these are the main aims and obviously most of us then have an experience with Ofsted or someone like that actually where they come in um, and you're told to, to teach in a certain way um, but actually the way we teach and the way we approach learning and the way we interact with our learners is a much more natural way. So actually rewilding and getting slightly more to our roots of how we used to teach and the purpose of teaching is really important. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why rewilding is a really good phrase for it actually. I think it is a more natural way. The learners are engaged more and it mirrors real life a lot closer. Mm. It mirrors how knowledge would have been passed on maybe not within this century, but the century before. And actually, mm. for that, it's taking education back to how maybe it should yeah. be. Learn I think that's been lost slightly. Yeah, and through modelling and things like that. Yeah. Completely. Um, I think, that being said, I feel like my understanding of project-based learning, my delivery and my planning has naturally evolved over the time. Yeah. I feel like I took to it quite easily, and I really enjoyed it, but actually, you always learn more things. I feel much more confident in my planning projects now, and. I'm looking forward to in the future helping others that maybe have that sort yeah. of problem. Mm. And actually, you do just learn by doing. Yeah. And it's really helpful. I think it's the freedom as well, though, when you're in a mainstream setting, mm. you're very much told what has to be delivered yeah. and what the outcomes need to look like. Whereas I think we're able to be much more free and fluid in what our delivery and what the learner experience looks like. Yeah. I mean, in your group, suddenly there was woodpeckers nesting in a tree within your actual learning area. Yeah. And one learner who has, you know, at times very challenging behaviour was just transfixed and was just wanting to see how many times the woodpeckers were going in and out. And yeah. it's just sort of finding those natural learning opportunities, Completely. which just hook a learner straight in. Yeah. And then, you know, that might not be the actual project, but that can probably link into some numeracy and some learning about um, different species of birds and things and still yeah. link probably back into the project. Yeah. And I just think it's, yeah, it's just endless. For me, it's like endless possibilities. And I'm almost like thinking, oh, there's like 10 projects ahead. You yeah. know, like it's just suddenly whirring with all these ideas. And I do think that staff who are perhaps finding it slightly more difficult to get the project based on, see that enthusiasm. Yeah. And that does start to rub off on them as yeah. well, and certainly on the learners. And they, you know, it's just lovely when they do recall things that have happened, and you, and it just shows that learning is really going yeah. on. Yeah, definitely. I created some top tips for anyone that if they yeah, are. I was just about to say I love some top tips. Top yeah, tips. I've, I've created a couple, and they're not exclusive, but there are a few things that might help if you are thinking. I would really love to give that a go. Yeah. Um, pick a topic that really excites you and you know your learners will love as well yeah. and don't be afraid to show the passion show yeah. the passion to them and they will become evolved with it as well um, it's certainly okay to acknowledge you don't know everything about a project um, it's a journey for you and the learner to go yeah. on together and that's a really important thing and particularly with our learners but I think in general always have a fallback plan <laughs> um, with it being quite a pioneering way of educating sometimes it doesn't always work yeah so have something in your back pocket just in yeah. case you need to fall back on something something else yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah. good good tips would you have anything to add it's hard to encapsulate it yeah. in a little way but yeah. I think that it gives a good flavor um uh, yeah for me it's just it's just a passion, I guess. Yeah. Now it is. It is just. It, it makes so much sense. Mm. I just can't understand why it isn't done more universally. Yeah. It's is there an so element you think of having to learn to trust the process and trust the learners more than you might do in a 
more traditional. I approach. think so, and I think maybe because we haven't got so much pressure about yeah. the sort of targets that we're trying to mm. reach, that does free us up. I yeah. think the children will still make phenomenal progress. Yes. But they'll do it in their own time, their own way. And some yeah. may engage more with one project than another. Um, and so progress may come in, you know, it may not be a, a sloping curve. Yes. It might be more an undulating curve yeah. of progress. But I certainly think that it just... But that's like anything, isn't it? Like, you don't Absolutely. actually see, like, as an adult, if you take up something, you, you don't usually just keep getting better and better no, absolutely actually. absolutely and it's just skills i think we i think our learners are learning skills as well as acquiring knowledge mm. which perhaps is is quite novel in education and you know seeing a learner with tools and uh, maybe quite unexpected for some people that aren't fully aware of what we're doing yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that also opens up a lot to the learners and our trust in them yeah. really helps them to develop. Definitely. And I think also we do we manage to get lots of peer teaching in because different children have different strengths. Okay. And then we really try to optimise the opportunities for them to then show another learner perhaps what they've mastered really well. Yeah. And then we know they've really learnt it because they're mm. able to teach another learner. Yeah. So we do use that technique quite a lot, which perhaps in a classroom setting, there's less opportunity yeah. for. Yeah. And that's very effective. Definitely. I completely agree. Um, how do you... F I mean, we kind of touched on it a little bit, particularly just then, but it's quite relevant what you said about the, the peer peer learning, um, or peer teaching, sorry. Um, I was going to say, how do you find it works when there's a a group of differing kind of abilities and ages and a slightly bigger group like um, I've already mentioned that I home educate and that I've only got three so it's easy to make it work at home or some version of it but following the interests and needs of a learner when there's a larger group I mean I know your groups are six um, so that's double the size and also I guess if you were thinking about a, a large group if, if you could kind of play make believe and imagine a group of like 20 kids like how you think it would work there as well? I think it would be the projects potentially would be chosen differently if you yeah. have a much bigger group. Yeah. But I think in terms of differing abilities, and we have mixed ages in groups yeah. as well, I think projects work really well because yeah. you can really differentiate that maybe the outcomes you're looking for or what the learners will get out of a project will just look really, really different for yeah. each child. And that facil is facilitated by a project way of learning. I think we're lucky because in our teams we tend to have um, at least three adults yeah. within the, the group and therefore if a learner has got a particular, you know, perhaps with the superheroes, they might have a particular, um, you know, superhero they've got in mind and no one else might be interested in that. Yeah. But perhaps one adult can go off and work and stretch that learner and encourage them and other learners can do what they you know what their interests are so i think it it lends itself very well to differentiation yeah and to pitching it at different age interests as well yeah um i mean a superhero for an older child might be a, an athlete or a sports personality yeah. potentially rather than a comic book hero yeah. maybe um so there's yeah there's just endless possibilities but i think in the outdoor environment probably it's easier to facilitate yeah. the um, learner-led opportunities, the different abilities. If you were in a classroom you, and you were going to go down the project-based learning route, mm. I think they'd have to be very careful thought about what the project yes. was. Yeah. Um, and if you've got 30 children, yeah, it's gonna, I think they, it would look different and there would probably be elements where there would be some teaching input yeah and there would be some steering maybe more yeah. than than having so much learning and opportunities but i don't know we'd have to go go have a go yeah <laughs> i i agree completely though and i think but one of the things that you highlighted there is how well we know all of our learners um i've been working with my learners for two years now yeah um, and it's every day and there's only five of them so you really really so get that's to know interesting because actually in a school you you have a new group every year, so you guys are sticking with them 
for? I could have mine for three to four years, okay. potentially. Um, particularly some of my younger ones who came to me early, and yeah. I could have them for three to four years. Yeah. So I really know their personality. I know um, what they will like and what they will not like. Yeah. Um, and I know how the group dynamic works. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting. You can almost then aid them in creating that group dynamic. You can facilitate the group peer teaching. You can actually say, well, I think you two might think similarly on this topic, so you can go off on this tangent yeah. and someone else can go on this one. Or actually, it just evolves with them, and that's really nice as well. Yeah. Um, you can almost start a topic and be like, I have no idea where this is going to go. Yeah. You can direct the ship sort of thing. Yeah. And let us know where yeah. we're going to go. I think it, that works really well with different learner styles, because it may be that some you know that some in the group will really need to do yeah. and be really kinesthetic so they might be building a raised flower bed or um, making a I don't know a display board or you know, like doing some big heavy work mm. whereas other learners that perhaps actually like to do some research might like to look up things in books or online yeah definitely. and you can really so it's all that they're all do, working towards the same aim and the same end point but they're going to get there in different ways different tasks yeah, yeah. Absolutely. which again models the working environment because in a company you're not all doing the same thing are you no, like everyone's absolutely. got a different task to do the same to, to achieve to, the same goal. Absolutely, yeah. yeah yeah i think our role changes slightly as well i don't necessarily feel um the role of a teacher as it was portrayed to me when for example we were in mainstream school mm. is quite different to what i do now yeah <clears throat> i feel like i facilitate learning yeah rather than I am standing in front of the class teaching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I might give five minutes of input just to let them know what we're doing. Yeah. But actually, then I can just facilitate their knowledge and their learning path instead. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing to acknowledge that actually our roles become different. Mm-hmm. Um, we very much respond to what their interests are. Yeah. Um, and I think that's how you can make sure everyone's interests and everyone's point of view is taken. Yeah and staff within your team as well, their yeah. strengths and their interests will really come into play. And yeah. Absolutely. Potentially different parts of a project will be with different members of staff that yeah. have got that skill base. Yeah, so interest. your bod example, if you had someone that's really good at woodwork, they might have Absolutely. assisted with the making of the bed, but if you've got a gardener, they might have assisted with the research. Absolutely. And it was yeah. exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like all of the people that are on site have very, very different skill sets and have very, very different backgrounds. Yeah. And that's why it's wonderful that you've got almost this culmination of different talents, abilities, beliefs, skills. Yeah. Um, and for that, there is almost a perfect member of staff for each learner at each moment. Yeah. And that's brilliant. And we utilise that. Absolutely. <clears throat> That's awesome. And um, Bev, you kind of already mentioned that you think that being outdoors supports this approach. Yes. Kind of more than being inside wood. Can you guys expand on what it is about being outside that makes it kind of more successful, easier? Uh, yeah, I think our um, learners are just, there's lots of barriers, physical and emotional, that are being removed yeah. by them being outdoors. And I know Sam has got some very interesting information about real nature. Um, why nature is so effective yeah. with everybody but I think it it's just I don't know it's almost too big to explain yeah. but it's um, you'll feel that it's kind of very natural you yeah. feel that it's the learners feel much less impeded that you know they, they just know they get muddy or they get wet we'll cope with that they'll yeah. cope with that doesn't matter if a bit of paper that we're using falls in the mud that builds resilience yeah. you know um and I, I just think being outdoors provides so many opportunities that being in falls does not and i think as as humans we're thriving outdoors it almost yeah. feels like i feel uh, so much better for mm. being outdoors people go oh well how do you cope when it's really cold or really wet I honestly don't notice, and I don't think that the kids do either. No. I think that we, uh, you know, it's quite a human thing to be outdoors and in touch with nature. And I think that really helps our, the nature of our learners to be much more open to education. And this is a different sort of education, but it still is a huge learning process for them. And a lot of what we do is about social skills. It's just about being together as people, being a community and because we're outdoors we don't have walls 
I think that just opens up so many possibilities and suits us all. Yeah. I completely agree. I think our environment um, for anyone has to meet our sensory needs and our emotional needs. Yeah. And I think being in the forest for all of our learners, that is definitely met. And mm. far beyond that, yeah. they feel comfortable there and they feel able to be themselves. And I think that's why it's really important. And I think that's why we're outdoors. As well as providing that, it also provides a resource of wonder, beauty and a sense of grounding as well. Mm. And I think that's why we should be outdoors. Um, I did a little bit of research based on it and there's um, Reggio Emilia. I might not have said that right, <laughs> um, but it's a methodology and a pedagogy um, coming from Italy. Um, and it says the environment is the third teacher. Okay. Uh, and it really sort of resonated with me because it explained then how it allows the children to explore their own interests, collaborate effectively, and it's not only functional, but it's beautiful and reflective of the children's learning. Yeah. It's constantly evolving, the same as they are, and they grow with it. Yeah. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, and I think it allows the children to grow. They document their own thoughts, um, and they use the adults as a guide, but they also use the natural world as a guide as well. Yeah. It's sort of everything works in tandem and everything grows together. Which is really nice. That's really nice. Yeah, well, I think it's the whole, for us, it's the whole day, isn't it? It's mm. maybe in school, in mainstream school, things are quite separate. Mm. Like break time, the children are just all together. Uh, Lunch time, the food's just given to them. Uh, uh, time in the classroom, the teacher's doing the leading. Whereas where we, our way of doing it, even preparing lunch is part of the process and yeah. the learners are involved. We're doing it all, even that's, you know, just on the campfire. Everything from the moment they arrive to the moment they leave is all together, that little team with the adults and the children and all outdoors enjoying that wonderful environment. And I think, I mean, it's hard. My husband, I brought him to look at Easter at the site. Yeah. And he, even though he's known for two year and a half years that I work outdoors, <laughs> he couldn't believe that I really outdoors work was. outdoors. He's yeah. like, well, where are the indoor bits? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know we work outdoors. But it is, I think it, it blows people's minds, really, yeah. that we Definitely. are 100% outdoors. Yeah. And that that is a, such a positive. That Some people might say that, to, that is just why it's working so yeah. well. Definitely. Because we are outdoors 100%. It's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's really exciting, you know, really exciting. Yeah. yeah. I think particularly for our school, it 100% works. I think in terms of project-based learning, it can work in classroom. Yeah. And I think you alluded to it before with the fact when you were working with challenging children before, um, that actually they responded to the project-based approach as well. Yeah, it looked very different, but it was, you could still do, I mean, I would do things very differently but mm. it would still be a project but nothing on the scale definitely of, of not we are achieving yeah. i think we're constantly adapting and improving as well like for example we're starting to incorporate technology more and actually yeah. when we get better internet when we get more scientific equipment for example yeah. it will only improve yeah. our projects as well yeah. and i think that's really important to recognize sometimes there is limitations of yeah. working outside we don't have as good wi-fi yeah <laughs> We can't charge our laptops. Yes. Um, things like that. You have to be ultra prepared for it. Yeah. Um, but again, there are ways around that. And I think mm. we're going through a process of trying to merge technology because that is it's such an important thing yes. in this yeah. upcoming world with the fact that we are outdoors. Yeah. There's some brilliant pieces of kit to be able to do that. It's about incorporating it on our sites as well, which yeah. is important. Yeah, but it's also using everything that's around for us. Oh, you know, when some new staff say, oh, why haven't we got this, that and the other? And I'm like, well, can't we just make some beads out of um, elder or what, you know, yeah. whatever it might be? Yeah. Can't we make some counting sticks just by picking yes. up a hundred sticks or whatever it might yeah. be? Yeah. You know, we've got, so, you know, you can show variation through different sheet, uh, leaf shapes. You can, you know, there's just endless yeah. possibilities just around us. Yeah. Uh, but yes, obviously, things like uh, being able to do some research on 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 the internet yeah. is 
add to what we can offer. Yeah. Um, but there, are, you know, a lot of the resources that we use around us, don't we? Oh, one hundred percent. Well, it's like the fact we made a whole display just using wood cookies. Yes. And it was quite yes. incredible. It took a lot of sawing. Yes. But, but actually, the fact, but the children enjoyed that as well. But the fact that we had a whole massive display board purely made out of wood cookies mm. was brilliant. That's quite impressive. Yeah. It, it was amazing. <laughs> we then had to weatherproof them, and that was a learning curve as well. Yes. Yeah. But actually, it's really important because then it is a more natural way of doing it. Yeah. yeah. And sustainable. As well. And sustainable. Yeah. Um. I, I don't think I've got any more questions about project based learning, but is there anything you guys wanted to say that you feel that you haven't said that we haven't kind of covered that you've kind of covered at all? I think probably that we are You could probably to, talk for hours. Yeah, we're yeah, beginning to think that education should be following this model. Yes. You know, is this yeah. the is this should we be going back to what probably as you were saying was done a couple of hundred years ago? Is this the model that actually will make children happier, healthier? more inspired yeah. and lifelong learners more successfully yeah. than the current model does. I think that's what I would probably say. I definitely think the current model we've got in education isn't necessarily fit for purpose mm. and no matter how it changes it does need to change Yeah, and I think that's a really important thing to acknowledge. Um, I think it's really interesting that we're doing something completely different and actually we're showing every day that it does work. Yeah. There are other people that are doing different innovative projects around the country that yeah. also work. Yeah. And I think it's um for different learners there will be different approaches. Yeah. But I think the current approach of mainstream school isn't working. No. So we need to look at that more. Yeah. I think we're giving one example of how we can think differently yes. and get better results. Yeah. And give Absolutely. more potential for it not being one model fits all. Yeah, a lot more potential. And also having alternative models that are accessible and not fee paying, because I think there are some lovely ideas out there. Um, but there's a lot of ones. Obviously, this isn't apply to our school for anyone listening, because that's uh, we're a slightly different situation. But for people who've got kids in just a mainstream setting and they're doing fine, but they want something different. Usually, you have to pay for something mm-hmm. different, which is it's not accessible to loads no. of people. So we kind of need alternative models that are going to be accessible to everyone. No, definitely. I think we need to do more research into it and look at different countries that mm. are doing it differently. Um, I know particularly I'm a big advocate for how Finland run their education system. Yeah. Um, I'd love to go over and see it properly, but actually it'd be really cool to look at people that are doing it differently yeah. um, and try and share practice. Yeah, Sharing yes. good practice is always important. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's that's maybe our next steps is that we need to provide data that shows how effective this method is. Definitely. And you know we are a pi- we're pioneering this. Yes. And that we can yeah we so can emulate yeah. what we're doing. I think yeah. that would be a good next step. Definitely, I completely yeah. agree. Awesome. Um, thanks so much for your time today, guys. I better let you go. I'm sure you've got um lots and lots to do. You both back on site today. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's it's true. It's true. <laughs> well, I'll quickly ask you my last three questions, which um, I've been asking everyone. It's a nice way to finish. Which in the first one, I don't know who wants to take it first. Is how do you relax? I'm glad to go there. Um, I... <laughs> You're obviously good at relaxing, Sam. So right yeah. in there. <laughs> um, I love being outdoors. Which well, yeah. sounds really strange because I work every day in the outdoors. Mm. Um, at a weekend, normally I still will be outdoors. Yeah. I really enjoy going walking and hiking. Um, I used to climb a lot of mountains um, in North Wales, particularly Snowdon, um, well, Snowdonia. But um, yeah. I love going out to Dartmoor, going mm-hmm. on big long walks. I love doing the coast path. I love climbing, love kayaking, um, but also love reading and yeah. listening to music and different things like that. Nice. Yeah, well, I guess we wouldn't be doing these jobs if we didn't like Didn't have the outdoors, yeah. Um, yeah, I love cooking, it's my massive passion in my free time. My family, um, walking my dog on Dartmoor yeah. or the beach, getting my wetsuit on and going swimming. And total contrast, I'm an absolute film addict. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what are you reading or listening or watching right now? <laughs> uh, reading, um, I'm very bad at remembering things. The Thursday Murder Club. Oh, Richard, Richard Osmond. Osmond. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Very, very good. And... Yeah, my husband and I binge watch lots of series after they've been on, and we're really enjoying Sherwood BBC One okay. at the moment. Cool. Nice. I haven't got any Wi Fi at the moment. 
So I'm, I'm, so you're just reading. I'm purely reading, That's which actually I'm really enjoying. Yeah. Um, last book I've read was an Anthony Horowitz, The New James Bond okay. book, which was actually really, really good because it took you back in time. And yeah. obviously the new film adaptations are in current time. Yeah. But this was taking you back to the 1950s, I think oh, it was. Cool. So it's really cool getting that different perspective on it. Yes. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Um, and finally, um, I mean, we've kind of touched on it, but I just if you've got anything else to add about why being outdoors is important to you. But it's hard to say. I think we've said a lot of it. Yeah. Um, I think I, I feel regenerated myself, to yeah. be honest. Um, how long I will keep going, working quite at the rate we do outdoors all day, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it's good for the soul, it's good for the body, yeah. and it's good for our learners. Yeah, I get up every day and want to come into work. Yeah, I, I want to want to be outside all day. Yeah, and I get to do both them things. Oh, nice. So it, I feel really happy, and I feel really fortunate to be in the position where I get to work outside all day. Yeah, and particularly with the learners that we do, it's yeah. wonderful. Oh, awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time today, guys. I really enjoyed the chat. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you. Thank you. huge thank you again to Sam and Beverly for taking the time to talk to me about project-based learning. What a fantastic way to start the second series of the Outdoors Group podcast and a great way to start the new academic year. Thanks to everyone out there who tuned in to listen to this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and please do come back in a fortnight for our next one. Until then, goodbye.